Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to share with you my first results in astrophotography using this Sterizona 0.63x focal reducer corrector for a schmidt cassegrain telescope. While this video is not a review of this reducer yet, I still think it's worth to watch mainly because of two reasons. First is the telescope that I've been using with the reducer. In particular I got a pretty old but classic 10-inch MIT LX200 EMC Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And the second reason is I want to give you guys my opinion on why I believe it's crucial to use reducers for Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes when we talk about deep sky astrophotography. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. It's spring 2025 and we're in the middle of the galaxy season, a time when many galaxies are available to image at night. Galaxies are located millions of light years away from us, so their angular size is smaller compared to nebulae in our own galaxy. If you want a galaxy appear larger on your image, then it's better to use a higher focal length telescope, such as in the Schmidt Cassegrain telescope as an example. Although honestly, I believe the best telescope for shooting galaxies is the one that you already have, guys. So here I got a 10-inch MIT LX200 EMC that I've owned for a few years now. Originally it came on a dual fork mount, however I decided to defork it and place it on an equatorial mount. I mostly used it for planetary imaging in the past, but this year I decided to build a deep sky imaging rig using it. I simply began by taking some test images at native 2500mm focal length, just to see what's possible with the telescope. Here is an example of the Orion Nebula I captured earlier in February. Just 50 minutes of exposure time under a Bortle 6 sky, nothing serious, just a test shot. However, I was pretty impressed with this first result and uh, I saw some potential in the telescope. My next image was the Messier 81 galaxy. As you can see here, the galaxy itself barely fits in the field of view of the telescope. I started thinking about a reducer and this part got tricky. You see, I use a Crayford style focuser on the telescope, which doesn't allow me to use a standard Schmidt Cassegrain correctors like this one. So here is an example of a standard Schmidt Cassegrain corrector that basically you uh, place right behind the OTA and you have 105 millimeters of back focus. The thing is, if I place the corrector in front of the focuser and when I have to focus the telescope, I would always change the distance of the back focus and it's something that you want to avoid, guys. There is another option available from Sterizona. The Sterizona team was really kind enough to me to send a copy of their 0.63x reducer to specifically test with the LX200 Me telescope. While there is plenty of information about its compatibility with Celestron telescopes, there aren't many Me telescope owners who have tried Sterizona's reducer with uh, their telescopes, and I want to fulfill this gap and show you guys what results can be achieved using a MIT telescope and Sterizona reducer. Now I want to briefly tell you about each piece of equipment that I got here. So the telescope, you already know about it, it's a 10-inch MIT Cassegrain, and um, for my imaging train I got SV Boni SV405CC camera, which is basically the same as CWO2600 MC Pro. Then I have an off-axis guider here, and in particular there is a top tech off-axis guider. My guide camera, you'll be maybe surprised, but it's ZWO120MM Mini. So unfortunately I don't have a camera with a larger pixel size to guide on the telescope, but the solution I found is basically I use a uh, 2x2 binning on this camera and get pretty nice guiding results. So the focuser here is a GSO Crayford style focuser. So on the top I got here a mini PC, Pegasus power box to basically uh, power everything, and on the bottom I got a small uh, 7 position USB hub. Now talking about the cable management, this system is way out of being perfect since this is just a test imaging rig and uh, the idea here is to see what images can be taken using this pretty old but good telescope. And of course I have a dew heater on that part. This is by the way how the mirror looks like. Talking about the reducer, let me actually show it to you. The only like a flaw of the focuser is that it's actually not that crucial, but uh, you're not threading the reducer, but you basically insert it into a two inch uh, position focuser. But yep, this is how, let me unplug it. This is how imaging train looks like. We got the camera, we got off-axis guider, the guide camera, 
and here is the reducer itself. Now, I also have SV Boini SV260 light pollution filter that basically works as LPRO filter. Talking about the reducer, uh, that's the reducer part. There is also an extension adapter for the reducer. And the idea with an extension adapter is that by screwing an adapter to the reducer, all you have to figure out is just 55 millimeters of the back focus. But if by any chance you need a larger back focus distance, all you have to do is just uh, take the extension adapter part off and you pretty much got 35.3 millimeters of extra back focus that you could use either for rotators, for uh, filter wheels, etc. But yep, this is how it looks like and all you have to do is just to insert the reducer into the focuser, like so. Talking about the mount, I have Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Ideally for 10 inch mid category and you guys want to use something bigger. However, what I noticed is that once you balance the telescope properly on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount, you still can get pretty nice and uh, decent guiding results. And also consider that I use this telescope on my telescope card. Like if by any chance you follow my channel, you know that I kind of have these teles DIY made telescope cards. And so instead of like carrying the telescope outside, all I have to do is just roll it out and uh, don't worry about uh, the weight of the system. So yeah, everything works pretty good. And uh, the only reason why I'm concerned about guiding is if I have wind throughout the night and then of course the guiding performance might be not as good as that would be with a better mount but that's all I have for now and I try to do my best out of the system that I have. So yep I think that's all what I want to cover about uh, the telescope setup. I've had just three moonless imaging nights with the system and there are some images I captured using it. First, I'll show you a picture of Monsieur 81 taken at native focal length, followed by an image of the same target using the Sterizona focal reducer. Do you see the difference, guys? We now have a much larger field of view and the galaxy itself looks better compared to the image taken at native focal length. Here is a picture of the Monsieur 101 galaxy with 3 hours of integration time. This time I also added a light pollution filter, the SV Boini SV260, which is a budget version of the Aptalong L Pro filter. And look how nicely the galaxy is framed here. Like I wouldn't be able to achieve this framing if I would take images without the reducer at native focal length. And talking about the details, like once again this image was taken under Bordel 6 sky from the city. Uh, however, just under 3 hours of exposure time I got pretty decent amount of uh, details on the galaxy and I'm really happy with the results. I got using it. And here is just 2 hours of exposure time on the Messier 101 Galaxy, also taken on the Boreal 6 Sky using the Sterizona Reducer. As you can see here, Gal Galaxy also appears to uh, look pretty nice, we got decent amount of details under low integration time. So yeah, these are my test images, uh, M81 Galaxy, Messier 51, M101. Also here is once again the image of the Orion Nebula taken at the native focal length. Um, yep, those are my test images and what do you guys think about them? Now, I'm personally happy with my first test results and I really look forward to testing the system further. However, I encountered a flow in the current system. So this is what a single sub-exposure looks like when taking images with a reducer and SV Boini SV405CC camera. So look at the amount of vignetting that I have here on the image and uh, that's really debatable. For some people, they might be okay. For some people, it might be not. Uh, I believe, in my case, the shape of the vignetting and the amount is caused by the position of the reducer relative to the OTA itself. And there are a couple of ways how I can improve the situation. First, I could switch to an IMX 533 square sensor where the vignetting would be minimal, if not even absent, due to the smaller sensor size. Second option, if I could place the reducer closer to the OTA itself to see how much improvement I'd get. And the thing is that I ideally like to use an IMX 571 sensor with this telescope. If I have that much vignetting with SV Boini SV405 CC camera, that's once again IMX 294 sensor, just imagine what's vignetting amount I'm going to see on the larger sensor. In the meanwhile, if I decide to get rid of the Crayford style focuser and place the reducer closer to the OTA, like using the adapter, uh, I'll have to use the original focuser of the telescope. Let me show it to you quickly. So yeah, I'll have to use the original focuser, which I actually tried 
to use in the past and uh, it gave me some hard time. That was the reason I switched to a Crayford style focuser. So yeah, anyway, I'll try to work on the second solution and uh, what I'm going to do is I already got this adapter with Schmidt Cassegrain thread. So I'm going to take off the Crayford style focuser, place this adapter here. Uh, as a result, the position of the reducer will be closer to the OTA itself. I'll take some test images by manually focusing the telescope. First, just to see how much mediating I'm going to get and really hope I'm going to see less mediating than I have right now. If this idea would work, then what I have to do is to figure out how I can improve the performance of this focuser and basically place an electronic focuser over here. But this is going to be for my future videos, guys. Finally, I want to share my opinion on why I believe it's important to use reducers with schmidt cassegrain telescopes. We are on Astra Bean now and here is my image of Monsieur 81 taken at a native focal length. Let's look at the image scale here and as you can see the pixel scale is 0.324 arc seconds per pixel. Now I don't think there is a point in shooting at this scale unless your sky conditions allow it. You see the average seeing might vary from 1 to 2 3 arc seconds. So in most cases you won't resolve that level of details. And that's why it makes sense to use reducers. And uh, here is my image of Messier 81 Galaxy taken with Sterizon reducer. And if we're gonna look at the pixel scale, it's still below one arc second, which is uh, 0.520 arc seconds per pixel. So yeah, while it's still below one arc second, I get much more light for the same amount of exposure time. As a result, I can capture more signal without a crucial loss of the resolution. Given that my atmospheric conditions don't allow me to fully utilize a higher focal length system. So, yep, that's something to also consider when taking images uh, with reducers. All right, that's all I've got for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching it until the very end. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Also consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel to stay tuned for future updates on the telescope build. And until next time, folks, clear skies.